Imagine running a ChatGPT level AI on your smartphone without an internet connection. Well, that's exactly what a groundbreaking new technology called bitnet.cpp is promising. Today, we're diving into the world of 1-bit AI and how it could revolutionize the way we interact with artificial intelligence. That's fascinating. How exactly does this 1-bit AI work and what makes it so revolutionary? Well, it all comes down to extreme data compression. Traditional AI models use 32 or 16 bits to represent each parameter. Bitnet B 1.58, the technology behind bitnet.cpp, compresses that down to just one bit. This allows these models to run much faster and use significantly less energy. Wow, that's quite a reduction. But doesn't that level of compression come at a cost in terms of accuracy or capability? You'd think so, right? But surprisingly, the researchers claim they've achieved 100% accuracy compared to full precision models in their tests. Now, it's important to note that this was on a smaller 700 million parameter model, not the massive 100 billion parameter ones they're aiming for. But it's still a strong indication that this extreme quantization doesn't necessarily mean sacrificing quality. That's remarkable. So what kind of performance improvements are we talking about here? The numbers are pretty impressive. They're reporting speed increases ranging from two to six times faster than previous methods, depending on the hardware and model size. But what's really eye-opening is the energy efficiency. They're claiming energy reductions of 55% to 70% on some setups. That's huge when you consider the growing concerns about AI's environmental impact. Hmm, those are some significant gains, but I'm curious about the practical applications. What could this technology enable that wasn't possible before? Well, that's where things get really exciting. The researchers say they can run a massive 100 billion parameter model that's comparable to GPT-3 on a single CPU at speeds of about 5 to 7 words per second. That's roughly equivalent to human reading speed. Imagine having that level of AI capability running locally on your laptop or smartphone with no need for an internet connection. That's mind-boggling. It could really democratize access to advanced AI, couldn't it? Exactly. It could bring powerful language technologies to regions with limited internet infrastructure, enable real-time AI-assisted medical devices, or even power advanced language translation without relying on cloud services. The privacy implications are significant too. Since the processing happens locally, there's less need to send sensitive data to remote servers. You know, that's an interesting point about privacy. Do you think this could lead to a shift away from cloud-based AI services? Uh, that's a great question. While I don't think cloud-based AI is going away anytime soon, there are still advantages to centralized processing for certain applications. This technology could certainly shift the balance. We might see a hybrid approach, where devices handle more AI tasks locally, but still tap into cloud resources for particularly demanding computations or to access larger knowledge bases. Right, that makes sense. So, how exactly are they achieving this level of compression? You mentioned something called BitNet B 1.58 earlier. Yes, BitNet B 1.58 is the underlying technology, and BitNet.cpp is the software framework designed to run these one bit models efficiently. They use three main methods, or kernels, for compressing and processing the data I2S, TL1, and TL2. Could you break those down a bit? Sure thing. The I2 underscore S kernel is the most straightforward. It compresses each weight in the neural network down to a two-bit representation. When it needs to do calculations, it unpacks those two-bit values back into their original form. The TL kernels, which stand for table lookup, are a bit more complex. They pre-compute a lot of the calculations and store them in lookup tables. TL1 compresses every two weights into a 4-bit index, while TL2 compresses three weights into a 5-bit representation. Interesting. So it's not just about compression, but also about optimizing how the calculations are performed. Exactly. It's a combination of clever data representation and optimized computation. And what's really cool is that they can choose different kernels depending on the hardware and specific use case. If you have lots of CPU threads available, you might use I2S. For large models with limited threads, TL1 might be better. And if memory or bandwidth is the main constraint, TL2 could be the way to go. This really feels like we're at the beginning of a new era in AI. 
Do you think this could be as significant as the shift to deep learning was a decade ago? Hmm. That's a bold comparison, but I think there's definitely potential for this to be a major shift in the field. Just as deep learning opened up new possibilities by allowing us to work with much larger and more complex models, this one-bit approach could open up new frontiers by making those large models more accessible and efficient. It's not just an incremental improvement. It's a fundamentally different way of thinking about how we represent and process information in neural networks. Well, it's certainly exciting to think about the possibilities. Any final thoughts on bitnet.cpp and the future of one-bit AI? I think the key takeaway is that we're entering a new era of AI efficiency. Whether it's bitnet.cpip or other similar approaches, we're likely to see more and more powerful AI capabilities running on everyday devices in the coming years. It's an exciting time to be following this field, and I can't wait to see what comes next. As we've discussed, there are still challenges to overcome and ethical considerations to keep in mind, but the potential benefits are enormous. It's a reminder that innovation in AI isn't just about creating bigger models. It's about finding smarter, more efficient ways to harness the power of artificial intelligence. Well said. It's clear that the future of AI is not just about raw power, but about making that power accessible and efficient. Thanks for exploring this fascinating topic with us today. And thank you to our listeners for joining us on this journey through the world of one-bit AI. Until next time, keep your bits flipping and your models learning.